Rewilding by Jackie Taylor. She always used to join in with the chatter and banter because there was really no choice, not in normal everyday life. But she'd always tended towards the quiet. During the first phase of the panic, there were online meetings, voices on voices, staggered stops and pile-ups of words and stutters and silences. No one noticed that she was the one who muted first, who clicked on a thumbs up instead of speaking, who mimed her way through. And then the meetings fizzled out anyway, as the tech started to falter and networks were commandeered for other purposes. Connections and nodes crackled and died. It was inevitable. It heralded the second phase of worldwide panic when Dogrose became Eglantine. Hawthorne became May as weeks passed and the orders to stay at home came to her by megaphone from the sky. As months passed, her reversions continued. Honeysuckle became Woodbine. Aquilegia became Columbine, and her language circled back on itself, rewinding, rewilding, her tongue becoming whole and wholesome again. The old words were easier on the tongue and gentler on the belly. She could stomach them and keep them down. She stayed at home. She noticed the ragged robin and cuckoo flower. She began to feel the length of the day span instead of measuring it. There was time to harvest wild garlic, elderflower, wild strawberry, elderberry. Sparrows colonised the wheel arches of the car that went nowhere. She'd always left windings of hair from her comb out by the door for new nestings, but she cut out the middleman and went direct, offering her shoulder for jackdaws and others to sit on and pull loose threads from her jumper, or take what they needed straight from her head. And if she needed to speak to a magpie or crow, why would she use her own words? It was all so obvious. It was only natural. She worried sometimes that she might lose words altogether. And if that happened, how would thinking be done? But it was worth the risk, and she liked her new ways. After the third wave, the threat subsided. She'd lost the way of counting by months, but knew that four longest nights had passed. It was the planes coming back that told her it was over. She wept at the sky and the fresh vapour trails that bisected and straight-lined the blue. She started to hear cars again, out in the distance when the wind blew from that way. Would they come to her? She wasn't ready. There had never been much traffic down the lane, her lane, only the lost. But still, the thought of people being able to drive past her cottage at any odd time. And suppose they stopped and knocked, people in cars, and asked for directions. What would she... What would she... Would she be able to? If somebody asked, what would she say? People would ask, because anyone driving down her lane was going to be lost and needing directions to the nearest big place. The first car was not lost people, but a van with the postman. A different one. It had been a long time, and he wasn't to know. He had thin, shiny papers about pizza deliveries and UPVC windows, all newly reopened for her business. He knocked on her door out of politeness to let her know that Normal was back. His eyes were black with sunglasses. She had to concentrate hard to decipher his words. She smiled at him and nodded, then shut the door, awkward and fumbling with shaking hands and sick to the pit of her stomach. When she walked down the lane that evening, there was a dead baby rabbit, run over by the postman. Small blood on the laneway, eyes widely open. She left it for jackdaws. Early next morning, she cut branches of blackthorn and laid them out across the lane. She didn't need much, the way was so narrow, more like a tunnel and dark with tree shadows. 
blackthorn-like needles for stitching of leather. The postman's tire flattened. He came on foot, knocked at her door, and she couldn't see his eyes again because of the blackness, but she knew he was angry because of his loudness, even though she couldn't fasten on to his speakings. She opened her mouth to make words back to him, but the words didn't come, and she was left standing in her doorway with her mouth wide, wide open but silent, as the postman walked away back down the lane and... It took time for her to close her mouth shut, even after he'd gone. She just wasn't able. She wondered then whether she should make some effort. Had her life slipped too far off its fulcrum to be rebalanced? Was it too late to unlock and re-engage her voice? But she felt no need to rejoin the cumulative noise of the world, or to add to it in any way, even if she could. There was no going back. And she wondered how many, like her, had found new, better ways. Sometimes she still opens her mouth just to see what will happen, but she can't, she just can't push the words out. Not even the old words, the ones that are easier on the tongue and gentler on the belly. The old words she can swallow and keep down in her body.